Oh my, look at those dudes over there. It's so true that all men are the same. All it takes is seeing some pretty girls and their eyes immediately light up. I was about to ignore these jerks, but then this couple walked in holding hands. Instantly, the jerks started making a fuss. Ew, look! That's gross! Then they pretended to retch. Jeez, these idiots needed to keep their outdated views to themselves. Well done, guys. You've just booked yourself the 99th place on the playbook. <laughs> Let me show you my playbook. In here, you'll find all types of men. From nerds, hot boys, jocks, and successful businessmen. But they all have one thing in common. They are all bad. Hi, I'm Monica, and I'm a playgirl who is trained to take revenge on men. Since I was little, I was taught that all men are bad, and it's my duty as a woman to teach them a lesson, especially homophobes and womanizers. Now all that's missing is the 100th prey? Then done! Hey sis, family meeting now! Oops, duty called. Mom's gonna reveal our final mission. Now, where are my books and pens? <laughs> yeah, those two are my colleagues and also my competitors. There's Cindy, my impulsive little sister, and next to her is Grace, my older, super smart, and slightly more mature sister. As for me, I'm something in between. Not as childish as Cindy, but not as calm and collected as Grace. Oh, here's Mom. Okay, let's get to the point. So this is it. The last goal. And it's the biggest one yet. So, this time, you're not working together, but on your own. This target won't be easy, but you all have your own charms, and I have every faith in you all. And the time starts... Now! Hmm, Dennis Groff. Dennis Groff. Let's see. Oh, he's quite handsome. The son of a CEO, and super rich. Hmm, it figures he's a lady killer, duh! But why did Mom assign him to us? I mean, she usually just lets us set our own goals. Also... Why do we have to compete against each other? Maybe it was because it was the 100th target, so she was making it extra challenging? We all love mom and want to please her. I mean, who doesn't want to be the last one to complete the family playbook, right? I stayed up all night making a plan of action. Hmm, from my social media stalking, I found out that Dennis's friend was having birthday celebrations at a bar in town tomorrow night. So, the next evening, I put on the sexiest red dress that I've bought for this specific occasion and walked confidently into the bar. All eyes were on me, except Dennis's. Excuse me? Was he going to the bar for free Wi-Fi or what? Seeing that, I took a glass of wine and gently approached him. But suddenly, a strange guy came out of nowhere and pulled my hand back. Honey, where are you going? Have a drink with me? Get out of the way. I'm busy. I was about to turn my attention back to my prey when, oops, the strange guy tripped me up, causing me to stumble onto the ground. This was so embarrassing. I guess I just have to call it a night. <sighs> but suddenly, an arm appeared in front of me. I looked up and, hey, it was Dennis? I was a bit surprised but quickly regained my confidence and let him help me up. After that, he offered to buy me a drink, and then we ended up chatting into the early hours. And Jackpot! Turned out he's as big of a golf lover as I was, so I persuaded him to join a golf club with me. Ain't that a smart move? A week later, and it was progress report day. One by one, we told Mom what we'd done so far. Cindy tried hard to approach Dennis by coming to the billiard hall that he frequented. And being the typical impulsive kid that she is, she bombarded Dennis with messages on social networks. She seems to be quite optimistic, though, as Dennis responded to her quite friendly, and the two kind of vibed when it came to Billards. As for Grace, she applied for the position of assistant manager at Dennis's company. I know. Man, my sister is a genius. She even said that she already felt some chemistry going on, as he wouldn't take his eyes off of her. Mom seemed impressed with the progress we'd made so far. Everyone's attained certain achievements, but sure thing, I was still in the lead. I felt it. I don't know if I'm being delusional, but Dennis and I were getting so close, and he had also shown some gestures of concern for me. 
Hmm. Anyway, it appears that I'll have to work even harder than I first thought to win this one. Yeah, I did used to wonder if what mom always said about men was 100% true, and why my sisters and I had to do all this. Until one day, back when I was 16, that day, I was going into my mom's room to borrow some jewelry for catfishing when I found an open notebook on the ground. Curious, I picked it up and discovered it was mom's diary. And it was in a tragic story. She once fell deeply in love with a man, but then ran into him with someone else. Worse, she didn't even have a chance to confront him. Instead, she got his message right away. I knew the truth already. You're not a real woman. We're over. Not a real woman was what that Nick called my mom. Ridiculous. Just because my mom is a transgender? She did not go through all this pain and heartache to be disrespected like that. My mom's life was tragic, like a movie. Curiously, I flipped through it all from the beginning, and my heart felt like it's actually breaking, finding out what mom had been through. Turned out, she and Nick were part of a group of three back in high school, alongside Maureen. Nick and Maureen were a couple, so my mom, as Jack at that time, had to keep her love from Nick a secret and poured it all into this diary. Unfortunately, Maureen found out her secret and exposed it to the whole school, which made everyone make fun of my mom and she had to leave in shame. After so many years, she was still not able to forget Nick, so she decided to do the trans surgery to return to find him and fight for her love. They had some happy months together, but on that one disastrous day, she found out that he cheated on her. And it was with none other than Maureen. Harsh. How can people be so cruel to each other like that? Mom was a good person. And thanks to her, orphans like Cindy, Grace, and I could have a home. I owed so much to her, which is why I was desperate to succeed at her last mission and to make her happy. Back to the mission. Everything was going great between me and Dennis. He took me to the golf club and out for dinner. For a rich businessman type, I had to admit that he wasn't all stern and serious. Actually, he was a lot of fun to be around. Then, when he dropped me off after a date, he touched my hand and said, Monica, I'm really enjoying getting to know you. And I would like it very much if you would come and have dinner with my family tomorrow. Whoa, this was great. I mean, this project would be way easier now I had an open invite to scope out his family. <laughs> No. What is this feeling? I had butterflies in my stomach, and my palms were sweaty. It must just be the thrill of meeting Dennis's family. Right? But why couldn't I stop thinking about his cute laugh and his dreamy eyes? Oh no, I think I might have... actual feelings for him. From then on, I found myself wanting to scream and throw stuff at Cindy and Grace every time I heard them bragging about how close they were getting to Dennis. I'm crazy, aren't I? Now what? Am I the predator or the prey? <sighs> OMG, I'm so nervous, I literally can't stop shaking. Whoa, they looked so wealthy and classy. His parents were both really sweet, and I soon felt a lot more relaxed. We had dinner, and the conversation flowed easily. There was just one thing that kept bothering me. His dad's name is Nick? Surely this was a coincidence, right? I mean, Nick's a popular name. Something didn't sit right with me, so I knew I needed to say something to mom. I anxiously walked back and forth until I heard her car pull up outside. Mom, is... is Dennis's father... that man? She looked stunned, then slowly sat down, sighed, and told me everything. Just like I thought, she picked Dennis to be the 100th target, or more like a bait, just to take revenge on Nick. Furthermore, she wanted us to use Dennis to make Nick go bankrupt. But what did Dennis do? If you have a problem with Nick, then talk to him. Why drag his innocent son into it? Mom and I were having a heated argument when Cindy and Grace approached. What's wrong with you? Stop being so smitten. Mom just wants to use us as tools for personal revenge, and she doesn't love us at all. Don't be so insolent. I see that you're letting your emotions screw up your decision. Nick treated our mom badly, so his son deserves to pay the price for this. You know how much pain he caused, Mom? 
Don't you want to fight for her? Wow, you totally suck and are an awful person. I couldn't stay here and listen to any more of this, so I rushed out of there and went and stayed with my friend. I have no idea what I'm meant to do now. One thing's for sure. I can't go through with Mum's revenge plan anymore. Maybe I should go find Nick and ask him to sit down with Mum and talk things through. Unfortunately, I underestimated my sisters, as I was scrolling through my phone when I saw a post from Cindy exposing Dennis as a womanizing jerk who dated three girls at the same time. As proof, she'd inserted pictures of Dennis with each of us. Trust her to do something so childish. It gets worse, as Grace linked up with a hacker to splatter the company's website with things like Mr. Nick Groff, the president of Groff Corporation, is a liar, traitor, and homophobe. This media crisis has caused the whole company to suffer. And now Dennis was avoiding my calls. I was hovering my finger over the call button when at that precise moment, Grace texted me. Hey sis, you better not miss the sacred moment we tick off number 100 in the playbook. The mission is over anyway. Let's just go home and make up. Mom's waiting. No way was I going to let them do this. So I immediately called Dennis and left an urgent voicemail, telling him that he needed to get his father and go around to my house ASAP. As I led them inside, Mr. Groff and Mum's eyes all widened when seeing each other. Nick stood there frozen, while Mum just asked him to leave immediately. But eventually, I managed to convince them to all sit down and sort this mess out. Jean, I worked out straight away that you were Jack. I was shocked at first, but then I realized it didn't matter, as I truly loved you. So I just wanted to wait until you were ready to tell me. You knew it? Impossible! We used to be very close friends. It's really not difficult for me to recognize Jack's habits. Besides, your face still retains some of the old features. Whatever. But I saw you with that snake, Maureen. And you even had the cheek to break up with me through one cynical text. Do you know how much pain I had to suffer to pursue you? Nick looked genuinely confused. Then things slowly revealed themselves. So... Maureen was the one who sent that cruel message on that day. When she found out about my mom and Nick, she investigated and discovered that mom was actually Jack. That day at the coffee house, she begged Nick to take her back, but he refused. So she made up some excuse to borrow Nick's phone and sent that message to break them apart. My mom sat there in shocked silence. I guess she was processing the fact that she took revenge on the wrong person. And now she'd caused problems for two innocent people. I'm so sorry. I let my emotions overrule me and make me bitter. I promise I will put this right. I am Jean Wilkins, a transgender woman and Nick Groff's ex. I thought he betrayed me, and this made me turn into an angry version of myself, who became blinded by my desire for revenge. Only, I was wrong. You see, it's impossible that Nick has any ill will toward the LGBT community. Because he loved me. As for his son, Dennis, he's a good man who got caught up in the crossfire. He's never cheated on anyone, so please don't judge him for something he hasn't done. As I watched the video, I felt immensely proud of my brave mom. She'd made a lot of mistakes, but she'd publicly owned up to them which took a lot of courage. Thankfully, the video worked. Nick's company has recovered, and Dennis's name was cleared. So, what happens next? Well, me and my sisters apologized to Dennis and Nick. Luckily, they are both very kind and understanding guys. Mom doesn't hold grudges against men anymore, and she's even started dating this lovely man named Jacob. Cindy met this sweet girl called Beverly, who, thinking about it, is pretty much her opposite but they're actually kind of cute together. Grace is still single and focusing on her career. And me? I will never touch this ever again, because I'm sticking with this prey forever.